Happy New Year everyone and welcome to the first in a new series of JDG Sport videos from myself, James Gordon. Um, I've been meaning to do these for quite a while so this is the I finally got around to doing it so I'm going to be talking or drawing inspiration should I say from an event I went to a few months ago now, six weeks or so, uh, the Fanalyze Fan Activation Summit at Anfield. Now if you get the chance to go to one of these events I'd highly recommend it. Not only do you get to go to a top class football ground in Anfield, um, you also get to meet a lot of people, get a lot of insight. The guys at Fanalyze, uh, Barry and Julian and the guys there ran a brilliant event, really well organised um, and I've been itching really to get a video done so that I could maybe give my feedback on some of the talks that were made there. Um, these videos each week I'm going to probably give you a little bit of insight into what I do. Um, my thoughts on a few things in the sport world, in the digital world, in the business world, um, hopefully from more glamorous places than, than my office. Um, so yeah, so for this first, um, I guess for this first video, um, I want to talk about club websites. So um, for those of you who don't know, I'm very heavily involved with Manchester Giants Basketball Club, of course, basketball very much a minority sport in the UK. Um, and one point that I found really interesting at uh, the Finalise Summit was Brad, I think, from Lightmaker, who made this point about how club websites are just, they're just there to sell merchandise and tickets. Um, I think this was a point made towards clubs not needing to generate content, maybe not needing to write things like news, do things like videos, video interviews. And to, and to me, I, that, that sort of struck a chord with me a little bit. I mean, it's great if you're Manchester United and you're getting interviews you're getting content you're getting exposure everywhere but for a club like ours at manchester giants you know if it wasn't for us internally um you know or shall i say me internally doing interviews or you know we've got some volunteers that do some stuff if if we didn't have those people doing those things then there'd be no one talking about our club so it's quite important for us to have that club website outlet okay yeah we want to sell tickets through it we need to sell tickets to it and we want to sell merchandise too but I just thought that that little snippet I took from Fanalyze where it was almost like club websites were dead that that was basically what was said I don't think that's true at all I think for 95% of, of clubs they still need a club website you know Man United yeah they probably could get by without having a club website apart from obviously selling tickets I mean I mean even merchandise they would outsource they could outsource that to somebody else um, but it's so important for other clubs to be able to um, generate their own content and generate a bit of a buzz about themselves because ultimately sports like basketball but other sports that we work in like rugby league even rugby union ice hockey sports like that if the clubs themselves aren't producing the content and aren't doing the interviews you know who is who is going to do it um you know journalism as an industry is you know in a challenging position and you're not sure you know who's going to have the resource you know the manchester evening news for instance haven't necessarily got the resource to send a reporter to every ice hockey rugby league rugby union basketball game and provide that coverage um and also from a marketing point of view it's not just about the media coverage as well for manchester giants as an example you know we need to sell we, need, we don't sell out every week like manchester united we need to get people interested in in coming to the game and Pointing them to buy tickets on our website isn't going to do that. What is going to do that is creating interesting content, you know, videos of dunks or some great things that have happened at games, interviews with players, and building that relationship and that engagement um, with the fan base or indeed with the potential fan base. So that's the sort of thing that I'm going to be talking to in this series of videos. I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts on that. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and hopefully I'll see you soon for another episode. All the best.